So today we're talking about how everyone belongs in data culture, and we've got some specific objectives that we want to try to achieve. The first of which is recognizing that there is a disconnect between data and users. We also want to think more creatively about who needs data, the kind of information they need, and how we can get it to them specifically. And then we want to save some time at the end to plan to improve access and usability of information. And we'll give you some resources for how to do that. So in these conversations about data culture, we've developed this framework because we want to really get clear on what we feel like the best practices and strong data culture are. I won't read you all of these here, but there are two that we're really leaning into today. This idea of user-centered, that if we think about our data culture and data systems from a, a more user-centered frame of mind, that we're actually going to fix this challenge in a way, that we're going to get less siloed, we're going to create less intimidation if we're thinking about our end users and the people who we actually want using information in their day-to-day -day work. And then the other part Part of this is the holistic nature of data. If we open up our perspective in terms of the kinds of information that we need in a more universal way, that it again will, will break apart some of this siloing and perception that only certain people belong or have a reason to use information. So to illustrate that, uh, Megan and I have a couple of specific persona that we want to walk you through. Again, this is the through the goal of trying to articulate that it isn't only specific people that belong in data culture, that there are a lot of different people, some of whom may seem less obvious, um, who have a very real need and value for the kind of information we use in school systems every day. So the first one here is a principal. And if you've read a little bit of the information about our persona here, this is a principal who is having to make decisions about staffing, staffing for in-person school, for hybrid school. And she's worried about teacher turnover and the impact that it's going to have on her culture. Again, this is a hypothetical persona, but based on our experience in most of these cases with this specific kind of role in a school system, she's going to have access to aggregate achievement data that she typically uses for school improvement planning. She'll have testing data. She has walkthrough and observation data on each of her teachers. But what we we kind of challenged ourselves to think that if she also had information like teacher and staff perceptions of workplace culture or the professional goals and preferred learning pathways of each of her teachers, that might change how she thinks about these teacher assignments. So no longer is she deciding which teacher are teaching virtually, which are teaching in, in the school, which are, are tackling concurrent or hybrid learning just based on achievement data, school improvement data, and maybe some observation walkthrough data. If she's also making that decision based on the workplace culture needs of those teachers, of their own professional goals and interest and the kinds of instruction that they are interested in learning more of and the skills that they are wanting to develop, that it could make for different decisions on her part. We do a lot with personalized learning and we have a framework that we use for personalized learning that's called the core four and kind of the holy grail of implementation of personalized learning is to get student reflection and ownership of their own data. Like if students can really understand what their data tells them about themselves and what kind of goals they need to set based on that. That's something we really aim toward when we're working with schools to become more student-centered in their pedagogy. So with that in mind, we were thinking about, like this is our, our imaginary um, eighth grader. I'm a former middle school teacher, so I relate well to uh, our eighth grader here. So she wants to study engineering um, or computer science after high school. She's worried about qualifying for scholarships and she needs a scholarship to go to college. And she struggles with dyslexia. She's had it, you know, she's diagnosed in second grade. She knows this is something she does struggle with. She has a lot of workarounds, but it's something that remains top of mind for her. What she really wants to do is she's getting ready to register for classes in, um, in high school. And she wants to know that she's going to be making the right choices in those classes to set her up for success um, in her post-secondary life. So she's got access to all of her report cards. She knows what her grades are. She's, you know, she's a good student. She cares where she is grade-wise. And she has a sense of her class ranking. So she knows kind of her relative performance in the classes that she's in. She has um, her year-over-year -year achievement data. So she knows how she's done 
through her elementary and middle school years. But something that may be helpful for her is sort of a strengths inventory so that she can make some informed decisions about like, oh, okay, well, this is going to be easier for me. This is going to be harder for me. And something else that seems like a bit of information that is attainable, but often not available to students unless they know who to ask is information about the teachers that she's going to be with. So you have to know who to ask. You have to know, you know, how to maneuver to get there. And we were thinking, if we are considering the inclusivity of data culture, why wouldn't we make that information available so that teachers can say, you know, I can share my syllabus and that is something that students can look at at the beginning of the year or when they're registering for classes so they can see like, oh, this is a value to this teacher and that lines aligns well with how I work. So it might work well if I got into this teacher's class versus that teacher's class. 